Welcome everyone to this raw therapy tutorial. Today we are going to be going over editing your pet photos in raw therapy. As always during this intro I've got the time codes of different parts of the tutorial that you can skip to. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay so I have a folder of pictures of my little dog here and we went out the other day and I just decided to bring my camera and take a few photos and you'll notice that I missed quite a few of the shots and that a lot of them are underexposed because I wasn't paying attention to my exposure and you'll see that I've already even chosen a photo and gone ahead and edited that particular photo. I've actually already gone through here and selected two photos and given them a five-star rating so if I hit my five-star selection toggle then I can go ahead and just see those two photos. And I'm going to go ahead and grab this photo and right click and come down to File or Processing File Operations and click Clear and just reset that. Then I can go ahead and double click on that photo, of course, and here we are. Just like with every photo, before we get going with anything else, let's go ahead and add some camera profiled lens corrections. Let's turn on our crop and I'm going to change my crop to a 4x5. Actually no, I'm going to change my crop to a 16x9. Something like this. Okay, and of course to move that crop area around I'm just holding shift and I can move that. Now let's head back to our exposure tab and let's increase the exposure until I'm just looking at this histogram right here and increasing it until I see that I start to get overexposed and then increase the blacks a little bit to bring some of that back in and then I'm actually going to increase the contrast to about 20 and the saturation to about 20. And so now that I have done those edits, let's go ahead and look at different ways we can enhance these photos. The first one is sharpening. So I'm going to zoom in to one to one and you can see that thankfully my camera was in focus when this shot was taken. So if I turn on the sharpening, uh, the best place to look at it is right here in the nose. If I turn on the sharpening, you can, it's very fine, but you can see where things were a little bit blurry, all of a sudden, bam, they're sharp. Now, with the sharpening tool, if I just increase it all the way, you can see that things get really sharp, but they also, there's, there can be some artifacting and some haloing that goes on. So I don't want to increase it that much to a thousand. Instead, let me put it back to 200. I'm going to increase it to about 400. And now that I have that, let me turn it off, turn it on, turn it off, turn it on. You can see it look right here in the eye. You can also see it. This is on, off. So it really does help uh, to really just bring out that texture of the fur. Okay, now I'm going to zoom back out to my crop. And then I'm going to turn on the local contrast. And I'm going to bring the radius down just a little bit. And of course, what this is doing is it's actually separating my subject, which is my dog, from the blurry background a little bit. So if I turn that off, turn it on. And it also brings a little more clarity here into the fur. Um, and then let's go ahead and come over here to our HSV equalizer and turn that on and then in the saturation let's go to the equalizer turn that on and sometimes my computer has an issue with showing that whole graph and I'm going to come here and grab this tool and you holding down control I'm going to select a color here and I'm going to select a color here and select a color here and basically they're all the same color which is great for me then I just have one tab. So if I increase this all the way, you can see that the fur becomes orange. But instead, I'm just going to increase it just, just a hair. And my point in doing this is I'm trying to separate my subject from my background even more. So to even do that, I could grab 
this color and I could decrease it. Oh, I could grab the color here and then oh, did it again. There we go. Decrease that saturation and grab the green here and decrease that too. Okay. And then the other thing, oh, finally loaded. The other thing I'm going to do is come here to the value. Actually, I'm going to copy this and then come here to the value. And I'm just going to paste it. So this button is copy, this button is paste, and you can you can copy and paste your graphs to any of the uh, this type of graph in raw therapy. So now if I turn this off and then I turn it back on, you can see I've actually lightened my subject and I've darkened my background, which is another way of creating contrast and pulling pulling my subject forward to make it really pop. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to turn on soft light. Now what soft light does is it actually takes a copy of my picture and puts it over the original picture and then turns on a soft light blending mode. So if I turn this off, um, my picture is just like how it was. If I turn this all the way up to 100, you can see that my picture has more contrast as well as more saturation. So I'm going to bring that back to about 30. It seemed like it was a good result. Turn that off, turn it on. Off, on. Very nice. Last but not least, I am going to come here and I've noticed that all of our contrast that we've added has actually made the eyes quite dark. So I'm going to turn on my shadows and highlights and here in my shadows, I'm just going to increase that. If I increase it a lot, then we lose a lot of that contrast as well as it kind of makes the, the photo seem overexposed. So I'm going to bring that back. Let me turn that off, turn it on and see, have I lost what I was looking for, the effect that I wanted? Yeah, I think that that looks good. Okay, now that I've added some of these shadows back in, I'm going to zoom in to one to one and just look and you can see that all of my edits have actually given me a little bit of noise. And that noise is most likely coming from my HSV equalizer here. So let me see if I pull this down, you can see that noise goes away. So I'm going to just adjust this a little bit. I'm just making sure that the noise has been dealt with. Okay. And if I still feel like my shadows are a little too dark, I can actually head back and come into the tone mapping. And in the tone mapping, if I turn it on, you can see immediately my image is quite bright. And now all I really want to deal with here is the strength. If I take that to zero, and then I turn this off and on, you can see that nothing changes. So if I bring it below zero, then my image will get darker. If I bring this above zero, then my image will become lighter. So I don't want to lighten that up too much, just a little bit, so maybe 0.1. You can see I spent a lot of time making adjustments and then turning my tools on and off in order to see what happens. You can also see that this tone mapping tool, I'm supposed to be at one to one to see how it works, but I can actually see the results fairly accurately by being zoomed out to my whole picture. Okay, so that's one photo that I'm going to go ahead and call good. So I can come down here to my Add to Q tab, and I'll just click that. Okay, everyone, I really appreciate you guys watching this tutorial. I hope that this has been helpful. If it has, please like, comment, and subscribe. I'd love to know your thoughts. If you have ideas for future tutorials or different tools in raw therapy that you want uh, tutorials on, please leave a comment, and I will try and get to those as soon as I can. I've seen some comments about maybe doing some moon photos and things like that, and I want to get to those. But where I live, it's been cloudy uh, for the last month or so. I haven't been able to get a good shot of the moon to then edit it. So thank you so much, and I will see you next time.